All right, good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? Thank you for asking. My name is Vahid Chitsa, as part of the Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for taking this time and being here with us this morning. Um, well, I should say good afternoon. Some places are good afternoon, but I'm always in the morning mode. So that's what it is. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody so everybody knows where you're coming in from. Hi, I'm Sarah Rose. I'm the founder of Tantric Activation. I'm a men's sex coach. Um, I work with guys uh, using tantric practices, which is uh, perfect for Chapter 11 of Think and Grow Rich, <laughs> The Power of Sex Transmutation. Um, and so uh, using Tantra, I help guys um, with everything from erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, porn addiction, things like that. Um, to sexual mastery so they can become advanced lovers and really master their sexuality. So it's not on ch channeling the sexual energy. You are talking about sex itself, the physical aspect of it. Or do you uh, also go into the channeling your energy too? It's both, yes. A lot of people come to me and they're in the stages of not even really understanding sexual energy. And so I help them with the physical component of it. But as they work with me longer, they progress along, then they begin to get more into the, the, the manifestation of the sexual energy, things like that, moving their sexual energy, being able to separate um, the sexual vitality from uh, from their ejaculation, that type of thing. Okay, but you do, uh, I, I saw your other page also too, so you do other things there too, and you beat the crap out of other people, so share with us a little <laughs> bit about that. That was, the big, that was the most important part that you left out, so just go ahead and share it with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a, a jiu-jitsu martial artist. Um, I train in the John Jacques Machado lineage. I have a great team here in Austin that I get to train with. Um, so working on kicking ass. I'm still a white belt, but uh, <laughs> but I can I can do some chokes and some arm bars. <laughs> well, my favorite is is triangle, but I, I understand how that works. But it's, so here's my question. I never understood that when you guys practice. You guys do it with your uniform and you have clothes on. But then when people go to UFC, even though they're trained in jiu-jitsu, but now you're like pretty much naked. You don't have much. So there's no, you can't grab on things and use that as a weapon against your opponent. How do you guys, what's the difference? So in jiu-jitsu, there's actually two different worlds. There's the gi world and there's the no-gi world. And so a lot of people train in no-gi where it's more, um, they're called uh, like spats or rash guards, which are just kind of like tight-fitting um, athletic clothes. And so people will definitely train that way. I prefer the gi. I, I actually really like working with it. And most of the time, if you're in a self-defense situation, if somebody grabs you out on the street, you're going to be wearing clothing. So it, you, from working with a gi, you would know how to use that person's shirt um, to tie around their neck or whatever you needed to do to defend yourself. That is awesome. That is awesome. So what's been your experience with thinking Grow Rich? When did you read it? How did you read it? How did you get started? With it? Yeah, I, so I've read Chapter 11 many, many times over the last few years. And that's because of my expertise and where I, my focus is, that's where I have, that's the chapter that I personally fo focus on. Um, and I think I read it first about three years ago and I just was like, yes, like this is another way of explaining it because he's not talking about Tantra. He's not talking about it in esoteric terms that a lot of people talk, you know, is very spiritual for most people when they talk about uh, sex transmutation and he's just like very matter of fact like this is a practical way like this is the practical impl implications of harnessing your sexuality your sexual energy and that's really what tantra is about and so many people come to me because they want to get better in bed and i can help them with that and tantra does help them with that but the way that it helps them with it is through harnessing that sexual energy so they can be able to move it through their body so that way their energy isn't stagnant because most people when they're in a relationship they're having sex with the same person for an extended period of time they get really bored and their sexual energy becomes stagnant like people they don't feel attracted to each other anymore and with tantra 
you're able to harness that energy, move it through your body, circulate it. So it's fresh, it's vibrant, it's alive. And so I really like how Napoleon Hill talks about it in, um, in this book and just the power of it. And I also believe that we can cultivate, and I've seen this, sexual energy can be cultivated. So many people um, may not necessarily just have that natural sexual energy, but by focusing on their sexual energy, they can begin to cultivate that and become more sexually empowered people. So here's my question. How awkward is that conversation? <laughs> I guess I just have it so often. The, the, the reason why I tell you that is because most cultures, um, I should say majority of cultures, that is not something that you have conversations about. People just talk about it or you hear about it. Um, you get it from a third party. You get it from a porn site. You get it from your school if they're teaching anything like health related. You get it from your friends, gossiping, all of that stuff. That's like the, the, the way we get it, right? So my question is, how the hell would you know you have that challenge or issues or problems? Second is, that is a very weird conversation to have, especially with a female that I don't know. So how do, how do these men have the guts to come and tell you that they got, is that happening in the DMs? Is it happening privately? Is it via text message? Is it via phone call? Like, how do they reach out to you? How do they, I, I'm assuming it's not a class where there's like 20 guys sitting around and talking about this, or is it? Uh, there isn't currently, but I've been asked to do the class, and so I'm actually considering it. Uh, but, yeah, most of it is through Instagram. They find me Instagram or just Google searches and will message me through my website. But because I'm so open about my sexuality and I'm just very comfortable with it, I mean, I just talk about masturbation like I'm talking about the weather. Like, <laughs> you know, then people just feel more comfortable because of that. And also in my, my Instagram blogs that I do daily, I provide information that's valuable to people. And so they realize they know what I'm talking about and that I'm actually able to help them. And so, so many people, they, they just, they don't have anyone to talk to about this stuff. And so they just want someone that will understand. And, and I do. I get it. I've heard it all. Nothing surprises me. Nothing. <laughs> wow. And how long have you been doing that for? Uh, so I've been doing this. I started my training back in 2013 uh, and then officially started uh, four years ago with um, teaching. Yeah. That is awesome. And, and, I have, and I'm so bad with time. People always ask. I'm like, I don't remember. I'm like, I can't remember yesterday. <laughs> no, the reason why I ask is because I do think, and, and I have seen it and I've heard of it, that when it comes to that chapter, there is a lot of individuals that get that confused. There is the physical aspect of it, and you channeling the energy. It's completed. So maybe I should say tangible and intangible part of it. So... There are two different things, and a lot of individuals confuse that. It's not just the act of sex itself. I, that's part of it, but that's not all of it. So we have had a lot of conversations on our channel with a few individuals that are experts just like yourself where they're, they're teaching. And, and, and here's the funny part. Here's the funny part. Let me tell you this story, and, and I know why this works, and I believe in it. It's because one of our, one of our coaches was talking to me, and it was this multimillionaire that was producing $10 million in his business every year. So he wanted to take the business to $30 million. He thought there was a business issue. So when the coach got there, you know, he found out that that's not the problem. The problem is him and the relationship he has with current, his girlfriend. Yeah. So by working on their relationship and fixing that, you know, six months later, they got married and his business naturally went to $30 million. So a lot of individuals think that the problem is their business or they think the problem is here, but in reality, it's somewhere else. Yeah. So a lot of times I, 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 tell, I bring it up to their attention. I'm like, do you think this is the problem? This is the challenge you're facing? You sure there's no other outside environment, outside things or other areas of your life affecting this area? This is where you're seeing it. But could the cause be somewhere else? So that's, as, a, as, as an entrepreneur, I've learned to kind of detect that, that it may not be the business. It might be other factors that are coming in. And I think 
personal relationship, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wives, all of these different things could cause those type of issues in your business or in your other areas of life. Yeah, absolutely. You're hundred percent correct. And when I do private coaching with people, it is, it's really about the psychology of our sexuality and the roots of it and what's holding us back, you know, because a lot of the physical manifestations that we have, the physical sexual challenges that we have, come from some sort of psychological root. And so working through those helps people unlock those, unblock those areas of their lives so that way their sexuality can flow freely and then they're able to have better relationships. They're able to get the job that they want, make the money they want, have, be the parent that they want to be, all of those types of things. And our sexual energy is what, it's the most powerful energy that exists it's the it's the energy that creates new life and so like utilizing that energy channeling it into the areas of our lives where we desire to create something it doesn't have to be a child clearly it can be a business it can be uh, for me, I'm like really channeling my energy so much into jujitsu right now, like really wanting to get good at that. Um, you know, so wherever it is, um, but just learning how to use it and, and also learning how to, you know, if you're a person who just doesn't naturally have sexual energy, not feeling like you're just lost and there's no hope for you because you can develop it. Love it, love it, love it. That, that's a, it's a very, very important topic. And Dr. Hill talks about it, that men most of the time are not successful till age 50 and beyond because of that. So that is one, one, one of the areas that especially. So here's my question. Do you get their girlfriends and their wives call you and thank you and send you gifts after you <laughs> help them with, 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 with their sexual, like, is that happening is that, or they keep it private from their wives and their girlfriends? <laughs> it depends. Some guys do keep it private. Uh, and it also depends on if they're doing the online course or if they're doing the private coaching because the private coaching is a lot more intensive. And I feel like that's a little bit harder to hide. <laughs> but the, the online course guys can just kind of do is 20 minutes a day, privacy of their own home. They don't have any communication with me, really. So um, so those guys, maybe they're hiding it. But uh, the women are definitely receiving the benefits of it in bed. <laughs> Love it, love it. Listen, yeah. I want to thank you so much. What's the hardest thing in jujitsu? If somebody doesn't know anything about groundwork, what is the one, what's the most difficult challenge in that that you're facing right now that you want to have a breakthrough? You know, the most difficult challenge with jujitsu and the one that you have to overcome every single day is showing up. And that's it. And I'm there five to six days a week and I just got to keep showing up. And every, you know, I show up, I work hard, and that's it. That's the best I can do. Five, six days per day, and you still white belt? What's up with that? <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu is a, a long practice. <laughs> it's a long path. It's about 10, 10 years to black belt in Jiu-Jitsu. 10 years? Yeah. Listen, I'm just going to watch it on TV, and I'm just going to enjoy your videos, and that's it. That's cool. <laughs> 10 years. I know time. people people look at other uh, martial arts like, you know, karate and stuff where you can get a black belt and a lot less time. And they're like, what's wrong with you in jujitsu? You're still a white belt or you're, you're just a blue belt. You're a purple belt. You've been doing this six years. And it's like, yeah. And I work my butt off an hour and a half, five to six days a week. And I'm just a purple belt, belt at six years. <laughs> So let me, you know what? Uh, we can kick ass. <laughs> with jujitsu, how much of it has to do with your physical aspect? Like if you're a big guy or a lot of muscles or if you're a female with big arms, does that help or is it more mental and technique? So, yeah, jujitsu is definitely more technique driven. Uh, and But as a white belt, you know, being a white belt chick in there with guys that are like 100 pounds heavier than me and have a lot more technique than me, it's a lot, it's mostly survival, you know, so they say in jujitsu, as long as you're a white belt, you're just trying to survive. Uh, and then by the time I'm a blue belt, then I'll have the technique to, to really kick some ass, you know, but even as a white belt on the street with untrained fighters, I could handle myself better than they could.
Is it really dangerous in Austin? Should I be learning karate before I come to Austin? <laughs> Not too dangerous here. <laughs> really, listen, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy day and being with us. Um, looking forward and, and seeing if I can watch some of your videos on the other side. I love jiu-jitsu myself personally. My wife thinks it's a little bit barbaric and she thinks it's crazy, you know, but I love UFC and I watch it all the time, but she's on a different world. She's like, why can't we be in peace? I'm not like, it is peaceful. We're not, it's not, you know, it's just showing different techniques. And I, and I watch it because of the mental aspect. I think when people are doing groundwork, you have to be so in tune with your body parts, with where you're at in space, where you're at physically, where is your opponent, what's going on. And it's like a chest. Every move has, has an opposite reaction. And you got to be able to see their tendency, which area you're good at. So, there is so much more mental that goes into it versus just fighting somebody in the street or trying to prove who's got bigger muscles. So to me, is that, is that aspect that's really, really intriguing for me because a lot of individuals, when they go to boxing, it's because maybe that's the only thing that they knew how to do or a lot of people like myself initially, without actually going there and seeing, I thought, well, you know what? The guy couldn't make it in school, couldn't make it in any job. He just went and he's punching people. But when you actually go in there, you're like, whoa, hold on a second. There's a lot of technique. There's a lot of mentorship. There's a lot of training. There's a lot of preparation. There's a lot of planning. There's a lot of system. You see all of that. You're like, wow, this is actually a lot of work. And I don't know if the attorney or the CPA could actually handle this. I right. think it's the opposite. My respect goes up higher for them because I don't think a lot of people can do that, even though from outside it might look easy. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not easy. I'll guarantee that. I only did one boxing class and I didn't really get into boxing very much. It just wasn't my thing. But the first time I did jujitsu, I was like, oh, my God, I love it. But I've been a yogi for so long. And so I'm very aware of my body. And like exactly like you were saying with the ground fighting, it's like be, it's having that that awareness, knowing your space, knowing your opponent. And so I think it came more natural to me. And also just like I I enjoy the the physical rush. It's not sexual. It's definitely separate. Like the fight is different than the sexual, but there's very similar sensations that that happen in the body, the endorphin rush, things like that that you experience during sex. And so it's uh for me somebody who is very sexual, it's <laughs> I enjoy that. Um it just and it actually helps me because I can spend time in jujitsu and not feel as much like I need sex, you know, because I'm getting those same sensations, those same, um, even the physical aspects of, of just physical touch, needing that fulfilled in that environment instead of in sex. So it's been an interesting transition for me to see myself like, yeah, I'm actually having a lot less sex now that I'm doing jujitsu. <laughs> and I don't yeah, mean that. You're so exhausted for two hours. You're like, listen, I pass on tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm exhausted for one, you know, totally sore. And I, I will always want to be very clear. I'm not saying that jujitsu is a sexual sport. It's not. But when you're looking at the chakras, the fight uh, instinct comes from the the root chakra, you know, and second chakra is all sexuality. So they're very closely linked. And as a society, we're not, it's not okay for us to fight. Like we're, you know, we're trained, like that's not civilized. That's not part of who we should be. But when you're in an environment where it's acceptable, it's okay. And you get to tap into that. It's actually very empowering. And, and just so be clear, we are fighting in business. We're not physically punching each other or putting you in sleep in triangle, but uh, I assure you that my, uh, my, my, my business competitors are trying to put me out of business every day on a regular basis. Uh, they're attempting many, I mean, that, that just happens. You know, you might not get punches, but you are getting punched. So to me, it's like having that instinct and being able to defend it, that definitely is there. And I'm pretty sure all other entrepreneurs feel the same way. Your competitor oh, yeah. is trying to fool your client. They're trying to do one up on you. They're trying to develop a better app. They're trying to do a better service, better pricing, lower cost. They're trying to, Apple, you know, Microsoft is trying to compete and beat the crap out of Apple on a daily basis. 
Samsung is trying to do whatever they can do with iPhone. And I'm pretty sure if you let them do anything, if they had to get physical to win, they will get physical to win. So it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, anyway, and the, 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 the jiu-jitsu guys would definitely <laughs> be the winners. <laughs> Love it. Listen, thank you so much for being here with us today. I appreciate it. Hopefully we'll do more interviews and talk about these things a little bit more so we bring that awareness and take that awkwardness out of it and be able to let the guys know that, hey, if you do need to harness that sexual energy, there are methods. There is a way that you could do that. You don't have to figure out on your own and you could have a mentor and a coach in that process, which is very, very important for guys to know. So thank you so much for spending this time with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.